Hey artists, how's it going? It's Monster Paws. So today we're gonna be learning how to draw and color eyes. I do have a video that was sort of similar to this, uh, except I didn't start from a sketch, so I didn't really teach you guys how to draw the eyes, the actual eyes. So um, today I'm gonna do my best to go step by step and try and teach you guys how to draw eyes. If you are a beginner, this is a good technique. Pretty much just start out with two circles. That's pretty simple, right? The thing to keep in mind with these circles is that you should think of them as spheres instead of 2D circles. They have form and shape to them. So whenever the upper eyelid and the lower eyelid cross over the eyeball, they will curve around the eyeball instead of being just sort of like straight lines. The upper eyelid is going to curve up around the eyeball and then the lower eyelid will connect with the upper eyelid to form the tear duct and it will curve around the lower part of the eyeball. For the iris and the pupil, it's important to keep in mind that when the eye muscles are relaxed, they will cover up about half of the iris. If you need to, you can draw a circle, cut it in half, and that is about where your upper eyelid should cover up the iris and the pupil. As you can see, I didn't really do that in this video because I just, I don't know, I think I was just kind of daydreaming because um, I draw eyes so much that it just it kind of comes natural to me. So, you know, I didn't really follow my own advice. But that's the best way to do it if you're a beginner and you need a little bit of help and you're not really familiar with the anatomy of an eyeball. So I always go ahead and add a little bit of shading to my sketches because it helps me visualize the final product. While I'm shading in my sketch, I usually think about what colors I'm going to be using, how those colors would look together, and how should I place them and where should they go. Things like that. So that's the thought process that I have while I'm sketching. And then I just go ahead and repeat the exact same process on the other side of the face. So once I'm satisfied with the sketch, I move on to coloring, and this is where everything really starts to come alive. Using a Pilot High Tech C pen in black, I go in and add little black lines anywhere where I know there's going to be black shading or um, just darker shading in general. Anywhere where skin comes in contact with skin, so where the upper eyelid connects to the eyeball and the lower eyelid connects to the eyeball and connects to the upper eyelid. The pupil is also going to be black, so I just go ahead and fill it in with straight black and the folds of the eyelid above the upper lash line. After I get all my lines down, I go in with my N3 marker and I start laying down some base shadows. So I go in with gray markers before I start coloring because I feel like it just adds a little bit of uh, extra depth to my colors that I lay on top. Every time I shade eyes, I always go in with gray markers first and basically just put down all of my shading in grayscale and then I go on top of it with colors. I usually always use N3 because it's a nice in the middle shade, it's not too dark, it's not too light. So I just go in and lay down base shades and basically I'm mapping out where my darker and my lighter shades need to go as well. When using Copics in grayscale, all you need to blend a darker color out is a color that's a step or two below that color. So to blend out N3, I'm using N1. If I wanted to make it darker, I would use anything above N3. But for this, I want to just go ahead and go in with N1 and sort of diffuse N3 and sort of start my blending process. After you're all satisfied with the gradual shadows that you have, I start to go in and intensify all of my shadows. 
So there's usually always going to be a pretty intense shadow right up underneath the upper eyelid where it lays against the eyeball. I go in right up underneath the upper eyelash area and fill it in with a pretty dark gray color. You'll notice that I also go around the perimeter of the iris. This is because I always like to have a pretty intense dark rim around all of my irises. I just feel like it gives my eyes a little bit of a pop to them. So I usually go in with N8 and then work my way down all the way to N0 or sometimes I even use Z00 and this just really helps to give a nice smooth gradient effect and really diffuse dark values. When it comes to the skin of the eye, I shade it the exact same way as I do the eyeballs using grayscale. For the eyebrows, I'm using a Pentel pigment ink brush pen in black. Once you've chosen all of your colors, it works pretty much the same way as a grayscale. Just work your way down from your darkest color to your lightest color. So for my darkest orange color, I'm going to be putting that everywhere I used my dark gray in 8 marker. And I'm just going to basically repeat the entire process for each eye. Using my second darkest color, I like to use that color to add details and lines to the iris. You don't have to use this color, but as a general rule for me personally, I like to use my second to last darkest color. Once you get all of your colors finally laid out, it's a little bit easier to tell what things need to be tweaked, so I went back in and started to intensify more of my shadows because now that I have my colors out, I see that the shadow underneath the upper eyelid needs to be intensified a little bit more and general things need to be tweaked. For soft highlights, I use a white charcoal pencil, and for more sharp highlights, I use a white gel pen. Usually I'm using a white jelly roll pen, sometimes I'm using a white uniball signo pen. All of the same methods that were applied to the first eye can now be applied to the second eye. Hopefully I was able to drop some knowledge on you guys today and hopefully you learned something. I still don't think I'm the best teacher, but you know, you guys wanted to see this video so I, I came through with it. I came through with it. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, don't forget to smack that ass on that like button. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, and Snapchat. All the links are in the description below. You can also subscribe. We do art things. 
Alright you guys, I'll see you in the next video, and remember, don't quit your daydream.